Hello and welcome to another edition of the Gadget Lab podcast. I'm Michael Calori. And I am John Phillips. John, what is that unusually handsome device you're wearing around your wrist? <laughs> this is the Jawbone Up. and We had this on the show before, <laughs> yeah. you may remember. Uh, Brian Chen had it a couple of months ago. He talked about it when we first got a preview of it. Um, we've gotten a, uh, a test unit and you're testing it? Right. I am testing it. I put it on last night and what this thing is, uh, I'm not sure what the industry term for it is, but it's a bracelet. And it <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's sort of like a, a, like a health, health stats monitoring device. Right. It's sort of a, a health and wellness bracelet. So you wear it 24 seven, it's completely waterproof. And so I wore it in the shower this morning and there's a bunch of electronics inside an accelerometer. Um, and a lot of data acquisition tools, if for lack of a better term. And it can record how many steps you take during the course of a day. And it has this real cool feature that I, that I did try in depth overnight, where you hit a button right before you go to bed, and then it will track your uh, sort of periods of REM sleep and deep sleep. And mm. uh, the next morning you wake up, you connect this to uh, your iPhone, slips right into the headphone jack. It downloads all the data and it tells you how long you slept, how well you slept. Uh, so yeah, it basically it tells you uh, what's going on in the middle of the night and what's going on during the day as far as exercise and the number of steps you take. That's cool. And uh, all the all the data gathering and all the analysis and everything happens within an iPhone app. Right. So it's the up iPhone app. You download it directly from the App Store. It's free. The bracelet's 100 bucks, but right. the app is free, right? The app is free. Yeah. And uh, there's this other, other cool feature where your friends could issue you, issue you challenges. So you could uh, send me a tweet or whatever sort of uh, messaging the, the software uses and say, hey, John, I challenge you to take an extra 6,000 steps today, which forces me to get out of my Gadget Lab seat, walk around the block a few times, and uh, sort of meet that, <laughs> meet that benchmark. That's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really digging it so far. It's sort of competitive with the Fitbit mm. uh, as far as the pedometer functions. It's competitive with the sleep tracker watch as far as the nighttime um, sort of biometric feedback functions. Uh, it hasn't been obtrusive on my wrist so far. People think it looks pretty cool. And actually, it's a great advertisement for the product itself. People walk by, hey, what the hell is that? Yeah. And you could describe it. So There's no bright yellow one, so they won't confuse it with the live strong. So <laughs> right. It, it does come in a few different colors. Yeah. They're all sort of muted. Yeah. It's, it's high tech in a very modern way. So I saw, yeah. I saw a demo of this uh, last week. And the thing that I liked about it is the way that it tracks what you eat. Right. You take a picture of everything that you eat. And then uh, a couple of hours later, it asks you, how do you feel? Right. So you take a picture of your you know, uh, carnitas burrito mojado. <laughs> and then a couple hours later, it asks you, how do you feel? And you tell it, terrible. <laughs> and then it'll, you know, it'll obviously gather all that. And it'll let you know, like, um, you know that you usually feel terrible after you eat right. carnitas and burrito mojado. The, uh, the iOS app sort of has this, uh, this three-pronged timeline that shows, that sort of reveals your sleep patterns over a period your uh, exercise patterns and this whole food feedback loop thing mm. that they got going on. You know, the Jawbone sort of concedes that the, the food portion of it isn't as fully developed as the other two, but they say they're in continuing development and that uh, everything should improve. You know, the whole taking pictures of your food thing, uh, it's kind of interesting that it launched this week because also launching this week was a new app from uh, Massive Health, mm -hmm. the startup. Uh, it's called The Eatery. It's an iPhone app where you take pictures of what you eat and then it shows you what your weaknesses are and what times of days you tend to, what times of day you tend to eat worse. And so have you, uh, have you downloaded it and uh, I have. it a shot? I have, yes. And what have we learned? Uh, I, I have not really <laughs> learned much yet because I've only taken one picture, but we'll report <laughs> right. back later. Right. Um, so enough about the up, we're going to take a look at some, uh, some freaky robotic vacuum cleaners. You've probably seen these robot vacuum cleaners before and wondered if they actually work. The fact of the matter is, they're not going to compete with a mop, bucket, and some elbow grease. But if you don't have the coin to get a maid, and you don't have the time at the end of the day to clean up your house, these make a great alternative. This is the iRobot Roomba. This is the original. It came out back in the early 2000s. Uh, it's got a all the dirt comes into this container on the back here. 
bristles underneath here will agitate pretty much any speck of dust or dander that's in your carpet. And this little part right here, it looks like it came off of a street sweeper, goes underneath appliances and around corners to get every little speck off of it. This one will run you between $400 and $600, depending on which model you get. This is the Neato Robotics Home Vacuum Cleaner. This beast is shaped with a flat front to accommodate this big and very noisy scooper right here. It runs you only 400 bucks. It'll agitate just about anything out of the carpet in front of it. It, unlike the other ones, isn't as nimble around corners. So when it hits something, it takes a little longer to get around. This is the LG HomeBot. Probably the winner in the swimsuit category for all of these. This thing has a similar structure to the Roomba. It's got these hard bristles underneath here and the side sweeper right here to get underneath appliances and around corners. It, unlike the other ones, doesn't have a collapsible front. It goes based off of the readings from these sensors on the front here. So it doesn't actually collapse in any way, which means fewer moving parts. You pay a premium for it though. The LG will cost you about $700. If you're fortunate enough to not have to worry about carpeting at all, then the other option is the Mint here. This one's a dedicated hardwood floor cleaner. It pushes along these Swiffer-like machine washable cloths on the front here. It's a small compact package. The only other caveat is that you have to have this thing. This cube, you set it on top of the counter and it helps the mint triangulate its position. This one's cheaper too. It runs about $200. So which one's the best? It depends on which one, what you're looking for in a robot vacuum cleaner. If you're dealing with just hardwood floors, the mint is hard to beat. It's cheap and it's very efficient at picking up dog hair, dust, anything that ends up on your linoleum floor. If you want to save yourself a little bit of money, the Neo Robotics Home Vacuum Cleaner works, but it sounds like a jet turbine engine, so you pay the cost that way. The LG wins the beauty contest. It's about as good as the Neato, but both of them, they get beat by the iRobot Roomba. The original is still the best. It'll pick up what the other ones have left behind, and it'll get every little nook and cranny that you need. And it's not nearly as loud as the rest of them. If you're in the market for a home robot vacuum cleaner and you have both carpet and hardwood floors, go with the iRobot Roomba. It's the original and still the best. And it'll pick up what all the other ones leave behind. All right, so we've seen devices that will track your health and sleep habits. We've seen devices that will automatically clean your floors. Now here is a device for regulating the temperature inside your home. Right, okay. It's a thermostat. <laughs> this is the Nest thermostat from Nest Labs. We did a huge story on it a couple of weeks ago. And it essentially is a learning thermostat. So you remove the uh, existing thermostat from your wall. This goes in, plug in the correct wires. And there's a whole big video on nest.com on how to do this correctly. And if you don't think you can do it yourself because you don't want to turn off the electricity in your house, they will send out a service person to help you. Anyway, you get that installed, you plop this on top, and you set it going. And in effect, what it's supposed to do is learn all your thermostat habits, when you like it cold, when you like it hot, uh, when, how you like it in the middle of the night, and it will sort of learn those behaviors and adjust to them and supposedly deliver the perfect thermostat program for you over a course of a few days. So is it about keeping you comfortable or is it about uh, you know, saving energy? Right, it, it's, well, theoretically, supposedly it's both. So it's supposed to keep you more comfortable and it does have these uh, energy saving features. So for example, it, the way it's being described is it's sort of like the Toyota Prius where you could watch your dash display and learn how to sort of modulate the way you use the brakes and the gas to generate more battery power. And so like that, you can uh, set the thermostat and when you hit it to a certain point, this little green leaf comes up. The green leaf tells you, hey, you're now saving energy. And so it's supposed to sort of train you to be more energy mm, efficient. I see, sort of like how the Prius tells you now you're running on all electricity and exactly. now you're using gas. And uh, it comes with this curious little gadget. We didn't know exactly what it is. It looks like some kind of eyedropper. See, I thought, I thought this was a device for catching your tears <laughs> because you're crying yeah. because you can't believe how beautiful your new thermostat is. But, no. Oh, look at that. It's actually, it's the little toolkit that comes with it. So Such you, a bummer. Yeah, you have everything you need to install this 
in your wallet. So not only did they design the perfect, beautiful thermostat, but they designed a, a more perfect screwdriver. Right. And this was all sort of the creation of the guy who designed the original iPod for Apple. He moved over to Nest Labs, and this is his uh, sort of big new celebrity gadget product. So does it do lossless streaming? <laughs> it should. You're right. It should. it should. Or I'm just going to attach it to my wrist, and it's going to be my new, you know, fashion <laughs> accessory for the tech, for the tech cast. Yeah, yeah, there's there's an app for that, John. Yeah. Uh, well, you're going to test it out for us and yes. tell us how it is. That's right. So installing it this weekend, and we'll give it a whirl. Make sure I spend enough time with it to really get an idea on how it works, whether it's working, how intuitive it is, what the AI is like, and it will appear as a review soon enough. All right. Well, we can't wait for that. And until next time, we'll be back with more gadget news and more cool products to show off. And see you next time.